I'll take a shot at that. Mark is probably the better person to answer that because he's seen some of the Latino organizations nationwide really come together and form groups like the LEO, which is the National Association of Latino Elected Officials, and other organizing bodies. Um, Latino Americans, substantively, they're different because there are just many more of them. And in the last five years, Latino Americans have become the primary minority group in numbers of overall population exceeded what African Americans have. They're both still at about sort of 12 to 14 percent of the national population. But Latino Americans are clearly the fastest growing as well in aggregate numbers. Though Asian Americans, who are about 5 percent right now, we're growing at a faster overall percentage. Um, Latino Americans, I believe, have can be an enormously influential voting bloc and political force in the future of America, which is why you know um, mainstream elected officials are now learning Spanish. They're going out into communities. Um, they're visiting their their countries. Um, but like Asian Americans, I think Latino Americans are not really one monolithic group. You have many different views, a lot of diversity. Cuban Americans tend to be Republicans. You know, Mexican Americans tend to be Democrats. You have very wide-ranging ideas. Um, Asian Americans, I don't really believe that there is a practical um, organizing force of Pan-Asian nature. I believe still the best organizing force is on an ethnic, by, ethnic basis. Because there are just too many differences between, let's say, Indian American versus Vietnamese Americans versus you know, China alone has Chinese Americans have probably as much diversity as all of Europe together. Let's, let's think of it that way. Uh, in terms of the diversity of views and perspectives and kind of generational differences. So um, generally speaking, I think Latino Americans have, are going to be the primary minority voice in the future of American politics. But this is a great question because it segues naturally into this slide I wanted to show you. And Mark alluded to this already. It's not really the size, but it's the quality of the organizing. And so we listed here, seven different ethnic communities, or I don't know that Jewish Americans are necessarily ethnic, but it's more of a cultural and religious organizing force. All of these communities are, we would describe as more influential than Korean Americans as an overall uh, ethnic group. You can buy, according to the 2000 census numbers, roughly, um, Armenian Americans, about a third or less of our size, are an incredibly <coughs> powerful political force in this country. And why is it? It's not necessarily that the entire Armenian American community necessarily buys in fully into this, but there's certain values and certain ways that they organize that the leadership, it's really several hundred, several thousand people that are very well connected. They understand the importance of voting. They understand the importance of political contributions given in very targeted and prioritized ways where they have an enormous amount of influence. They're just really good at American politics. Arab Americans, they're more um, Arab Americans now than Presbyterians. But when you think about, some of you may think that the Presbyterian Church, uh, in terms of an organizing force, may be pretty influential among mainline Christian organizations. The fact of the matter is, is that Arab Americans, because probably of some of the perceived threats and the perceived misunderstandings that mainstream Americans may have against, Arab Americans have really gotten themselves organized in a way that they are giving large political contributions. They're getting out there. They have organized lobbying efforts. They have a think tank. They have all these groups and associations that they're working very well together. Greek Americans. This is a, a, a case where uh, when Michael Tupac was ran for governor of the state of Massachusetts and then for president, seeking the, the 88 Democratic nomination, really heightened awareness of Greek Americans in American politics. It's almost like every Greek diner. And by the way, those Greek divers are being sold to Korean, Asian, Jewish, and other minority groups now. Um, it's like every Greek diner turned into an instant campaign office when Mike Dukakis ran for president of the United States. So this is a case where you have a high-profile Greek American leader who did well in, Ameri in major American politics, was viewed very much as an American leader, not a Greek leader. Um, they did, he did it enormously well. It really excelled accelerated the pace of political empowerment, right up through all those organizations to, to Jewish Americans. On a per um, capita basis, it's probably the, uh, the best political organizing group in America. They contribute roughly half the money to the Democratic Party nationwide. And it's an 
enormous amount of influence. And you know, whatever your views may be in the Middle East, believe me, the U.S. is very pro-Israel, um, in large part because of the very effective advocacy and political organizations that the Jewish American community have formed, not just to the Democrats, but also to the Republicans. So in a very bipartisan nature, they've been incredibly effective. So, you know, all of these other groups are much more influential than we are. And we are, according to the official census, though some might argue we're close to 2 million people now, um, we also have that potential. And the way that Mark described it as the right elements coming together, um, we see an enormous opportunity you know, in the near future, in the next five to 10 years, we see a lot happening. Um, so I would say that's, those are some of my thoughts on the difference between the idea of markets and A question of how should the Korean American community best influence the future direction of America. Right. I'm starting with the assumption that you're here, that this organization is called NetCal. It's because we've made um, some very complicated choices personally, that we identify ourselves as Americans. So let me start off by saying that some Korean Americans don't. Some Korean Americans still identify more closely to Korea. And I think if they had uh, choices, more choices in their lives, they may just decide to move back to Korea after sort of, you know, living the American dream. So I'm starting with the assumption that, you know, everyone here in this room has chosen personally in your own lives and in, the own, in, in your own way that you live and the own way that you think about your relationship to this country that you are an American first. Uh, because if you, don't have, if you haven't made that choice personally, then the rest of this discussion isn't really relevant. Um, and so, so if you choose to live here as an American, then I would assume for your family's sake, for your children's sake, for your grandchildren's sake, that you want to invest in this community and make it better um, in the particular view that you have for what America should be. Now, politics is really then how you influence the future. And I'm going to bring up a word which many people have written about over the years, power. What the hell is power? You know, when Robert Carroll wrote the famous book, Power Broker, what does that mean exactly? Um, all of those organizations that Mark talked about before are various ways of, in some, uh, one may look at it as how do you organize our community in a way that maximize, maximizes our influence in the process here as Americans. Um, and so I'm going to get right down, I think this is the, the very kind of practical element of politics. I think politics boils down to three things, essentially. And this is um, a way of synthesizing how you influence the system, how you gather as much power so that you can change laws, so that you can you know, make a better future for your children in this country. One, clearly, because it's a democratic elected system, are votes. Or another way of putting it are relationships. And you may never want to decide to run for elected office, uh, but forming the right relationships, not only with Korean Americans, but forming the right personal relationships with non-Korean Americans, especially mainstream American leaders that are in positions of influence, is absolutely essential. You know, Mark and I, in some ways, largely got the opportunities we had because of our personal relationships with very key um, uh, folks. In we're both Democrats. Uh, but this subject is relevant for, for any uh, party. Um, Mark has very good relationships with uh, Senator Dick Durbin, who is the senior senator to Barack Obama, C. Williams and Obama supporter right there, and that and for other reasons. I had a close relationship with, and still have a close relationship with Bill Bradley, who also ran for president in 2000. And these single relationships really matter a lot because it opens up so much, and they are sort of they're the ones that give us credibility, sort of in the non korean American circles, in a sense. Um, and so, votes and relationships are definitely the most important part, I think. In a capitalistic society, it also boils down to money. Let's be real about it. Money drives the, the, the way that uh, America works. Um, the fact that uh, the Jewish American community is raising half the money to the Democratic Party on an annual basis is a very big part of why they have so much influence. And there is a direct correlation between the amount of money that 
communities raise for political causes to their influence in American society. And what are the metrics that we look at are that the Korean American community just is not raising enough in political uh, fundraising for various political causes. And we also tend to be, um, we're split right down the middle. First generation folks tend to be more Republican, second generation folks tend to be more Democratic, but we're pretty much split down the middle. 